Yes, indeed, folks. It's Blue Brothers. Blue Brothers? Blues Brothers! With Think. Which is what 98% of wild players do not do. And they need to slap around the head for it. However, the people who listen to Blue Please do think. Which is why they've been entering the amazingly fantastic feature that is... It's working! Yeah, it's working! It's working as intended, baby! Oh, lordy, lordy. Okay. The dishonor system. Now, it doesn't work. It's that simple. It has no logic behind it. When you have an honor system that's based in PvP and you have a dishonor system that's based in PvE, you think, what the hell is going on? It's illogical, folks. It's not a yin and yang system. I don't like it. So, I've been asking people, what would you do to the dishonor system to make it a little bit more sensible? Okay. Well, Brian, I'm going to read these all out, unedited, uncensored, etc., and then we'll see what's come out of this discussion so far. If you want to enter your information in, which will, of course, be credited on the air and in the post when we eventually put it up on the suggestions forum, you can send your suggestions into the Murloc, no spaces, at gmail.com. The Murloc at gmail.com. And. The Murloc does not have a K at the end of it. It's not a Murloc as in a Warlock Merzel, which isn't really a word, but Merzel combo. It's a Murloc. It's got a C at the end. So here we go. Brandon comes up with this idea. My idea is that if, say, a lower player comes up on a player which displays as double question marks, the higher player cannot attack, but the lower player can. At this point, the higher can defend himself or herself. If you can see the levels, I say a fair game. Okay. It's a possibility. Only issue I can see with that is that you'll get 50s being mobbed by 539s, and they will get killed. It's that simple. That's the only possibility I can see there. Having said that, you then think of, well, if that group of 539s was around an area of the 50 in any way, they'd probably go for him. And the 50 still wouldn't be able to kill him, no matter whether or not he was able to attack them in the first place. So, okay, possibility right there. So let's see what else we've got. Tobias Olsen comes up with this one. Some factors that could be measured and means that it was indeed a dishonorable kill. So he's basically saying we need an under the hood system of calculations. First of all, the player that gets the DK must be the one that initializes the combat. Okay? Otherwise, people who will be getting DKs will just keep attacking the higher levels. I'm not entirely sure what it means there, but. Anyone that is a certain amount of levels lower than you and has no friends close by, people from the same faction with a certain range, is a DK. Okay, that's a possibility. If you're attacked by several people that are not a certain amount of levels lower than you, you, you are a DK. That's interesting. So, he's suggesting formula-based calculation on the basis of people being within a specific range of you. The only problem I can see with that is that you may have an issue of, well, I got a DK because there was a whole bunch of people around me, but they weren't necessarily doing anything to help me. And that's unfair. Possibility, but maybe that could be worked on by an in-combat system and healing done to the person attacking, tag of the other person attacking them, etc, etc. If you're attacked by civil people, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. However, if you have friends close by, you might not be a DK. There are still some issues such as if the people close by are not willing to help you since they still get ganked without being a DK. So that's his initial thought on the subject, and to be honest, that would be my way of going as well. I was thinking a multi-tiered, formula-based, under-the-hood calculation system. And if you can say that while drunk, you get a medal. Almost about that song title earlier, couldn't think of it. Anyway, I think that would be the best option. Only as you can see, maybe, maybe extra lag from the calculations going on, but I can't prove that, so I'm not even going to say it. That's a good possibility there from Tobias Olsen. Jason Blunk says this. 
Unfortunately, the dishonor system can't be implemented well because there will be players who will exploit it. The only way to avoid this is to have a ton of ifs in the implementation of the system. So you've got an if this happens, do this. If so, you've got what's effectively a tree diagram and a flow chart. Blizzard could observe PvP everywhere in the world and view PvP from Astronaut to Ungoro. Eventually, a system will show up. The system will be so complex that writing a program will be near impossible. Maybe. Instead, dishonorable kills should be looked at. Instead of hitting your ranking straight away, it should cost on a proportionate to your level. So about your level times 12 contribution points should be taken away from your talent at the end of the week. Okay. That's a possibility. He also says remove civilians because nobody likes them. And they literally drive back people decked in MC gear from raiding. Yeah. I agree. He also suggests that the way of dealing with civilians would be to make them unkillable in the first place. On a PvE server, yeah. Not on a PvP server. I disagree with that. Civilians don't take long to respawn anyway. I'm sorry if your fruit vendor has been killed and you can't get delicious bananas for another 30 seconds. But it's the way of the world. It's supposed to be Warcraft. Not Peacecraft, not flaunts around doing silly things that make no logical sense craft. Warcraft. If I want to invade a bloody city, I will invade a bloody city and I will kill everybody in it in a bloody mess. And I will say, hi, I'm a member of the Horde. So I say that, to be honest, that civilians should be killable and there should be no penalty for it. It's illogical. Right. There's a few suggestions. There are more coming in. I'm not going to spend the entire segment talking about them, but if you want to get a suggestion in for the Working as Intended segment, and the question is, of course, how would you fix the dishonor system on the basis that you believe it's broken in the first place, email the at gmail.com. Right. Now, I was reading the forums, and one of the things I often see which is not necessarily bounce related is oh my god my equipment looks so crap wow is not a fashion show folks that's what I'm going to blab on about for the next five minutes it isn't really okay say you're in a battle situation you are back in olden times you are a mighty warrior and you are going into battle the last thing you're worried about is if you are colour coordinated. Or if this piece of plate armour is really in this ring. Perhaps I should wear a scarf with my breastplate of eternal wrath. No, 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 no. Equipment is not necessarily going to look absolutely fantastic. Because equipment's supposed to be functional. You get your new sword. Ha, ah, this has got great stats. Oh dear, it looks like... A spoon. Doesn't matter, it's still got great stats. You can still beat people over the head with it. So, not all equipment is supposed to look fantastic. But again, it comes down to the fact that all players want to look elite. They want to look imposing, impressive, mighty. They are mighty heroes of the Horde or mighty heroes of the Alliance. So, they want shiny armor that blinds people when you walk past. They want the Emperor's new cloak, even though they can't see it. Or anyone else for that matter. They want to be scary, elite, noble, or perhaps evil. And can you do that in a breastplate that's bright pink? Maybe not. But I think that's not a big issue. And it's something that people whine about very disproportionately. You'd think they'd be complaining about actual in-game issues that affect the gaming experience pretty harshly. But no. No, they don't. They whinge about the colour of their smegging gloves. And that makes me think, wow. And not in a World of Warcraft way. It makes me think, wow, just wow. How ridiculous is that? Oh, well. Everyone has to have something to complain about, I suppose. I expect we will see increases in these kind of complaints. As bugs are fixed, issues are resolved, and classes are balanced, 
got to find something new to whinge about. Because this is our nature. We pay for this game, therefore we're entitled to whine about everything. We're entitled to put forward the impression that we hate the game with a passion, and yet we still play it for some unknown reason. So we've got to find something to whine about. So you go to your class balance. Okay, my class is balanced, it's working fine. I go to equipment. Oh, my, well, my equipment works fine. The game works fine. I haven't crashed recently. I've had no queues. There are no bugs, etc. What can we complain about this week? Ah, yes. The colour of my hat, etc, etc. Quite frankly, I think it would be funny to see more brightly coloured pieces of armour, etc. More silly hats. I complain. This has been my biggest complaint since I've started WoW. There is no top hat in World of Warcraft. And that is unacceptable. We have a tuxedo set, three-piece tuxedo, and there's no top hat. I can wear a diving helmet. That's no problem. I can wear a helmet that propels me forward at hundreds of miles an hour, smack bang into the mob I'm targeting and knocks it out. I can wear boots with rocket boosters attached to it. But I can't have a top hat. If anything, if there was anything I needed to prove that Blizzard is clearly evil and hates me, it must be that. No top hat. That was got to be the thing I would beg Blizzard to do. Give me a top hat, please. Give it intellect. I was good, would say give it charisma, but we don't really have that. Give it some fantastic usable ability like the Admiral's hat. I want a top hat. So, here's your mission for the week. We've already annoyed the community managers a bit by asking them to free the piggy. And eventually we saw tech lead, I think he may have been drunk or stoned at this point, saying that we should free the piggy and put a paladin in there instead. Those who don't know about the free the piggy campaign, there's a little piggy, a razor main boar, down in Camp Tarajo, and he's been in the cage since beta. And we think he needs to be let out and replaced with something else. It was either going to be tech lead or a paladin, but I think tech lead gave in and relented. It's going to be a paladin, we're going to put a paladin in there. They're not any good for anything anyway, they're buff bots. Sorry to all the paladins listening. Actually, no, I'm not sorry. Paladins are evil. So this week, your mission is to ask the GMs, the CMs, where's my top hat? I want a top hat. We must get a top hat. We need more novelty hats. I think there is something overwhelmingly fantastic about a game with a large selection of hats. Plumage, big pink ha hats. You can be a wow PIMP and so forth with your goblin hose and your bling. And you can get bling, you can get a large diamond ring, although you can't actually see it, which is a bit of a bind. You should have a usable ability to blind people. However, we want hats. So I want you to ask your local GM, ask your local CM, when are we getting new comedy hats? That is my serious plea for you today. On other shows, you get things like Oxfam pleading for money. On this show, we ask for hats, and only hats. Right. Another hour left of the show, plenty more to come. But of course, Nubcake News. And Rap in the Forums. Plus a little bit more for our Working as Intended segment. And plenty more discussion points. However, I get onto some music. As expected. <laughs> Although I wasn't thinking ahead, so I didn't think what kind of music I could put on. Yeah, I'll inflict that on you. You're listening to Wild Radio. You're listening to the Blue Please Show with Toll Biscuit. It's the Wurzels. It's Combine Harvester. Enjoy. Enjoy. 